Good day to everyone. Our topic for today is all about classification of taxpayers and earners. So we'll begin with the individuals. So if we are going to classify the individuals, it could be citizens and non-citizens. Let us first classify the groups for the citizens. If we are going to define citizen, this who are citizens of the Philippines at the time of adoption of the 1987 Constitution and whose fathers or mothers are citizens of the Philippines and those born before January 1, 1973 of the Filipino mothers who elect Philippine citizenship upon reaching the age of maturity and those who are naturalized in accordance with the law. So citizens could be resident or non-resident. So when we say resident citizen, it's a Filipino citizen who stayed permanently in the Philippines or stayed outside the Philippines for less than 180 days during the taxable year. So a citizen of the Philippines residing therein is taxable for all income derived from the sources within and without the Philippines. So we have to uh, remember that, that if you are a resident citizen, he or she will be taxable within and without. Another type is non-resident citizen. This establishes the fact of the physical presence abroad with a definite intention to reside therein. And aside from that, leaves the Philippines during the taxable year to reside abroad as an immigrant or for employment on a permanent basis or for work and derives income from abroad and whose employment Thereat requires him to physically abroad in most of the time during the taxable year. Aside from that, a citizen of the Philippines who shall have stayed outside the Philippines for 183 days or more by the end of the year. Okay, so klarong klaro yan. More than 183 days, okay, by the end of the year. Okay, so... It must have established a proof to the BIR commissioner of his definite intention to reside outside the Philippines on a permanent basis as an immigrant or employee. So, yan yung uh, additional requisite niya na dapat mapatunayan niya that there must be an intention, okay, definite intention to reside if ever uh, magsistay siya outside the Philippines on a permanent basis as an immigrant or employee. Okay, so a non-resident citizen is taxable only on income derived from sources within the Philippines. However, there is a citizen of the Philippines who works and derives from abroad and whose employment requires him to be physically present abroad and most of the time at least 183 days during the taxable year is to be classified as a non-resident citizen. Okay, so, aside, uh, an example, an individual citizen of the Philippines who is working and deriving income from abroad as overseas contract worker, paano natin sila classify is taxable only on income from sources within the Philippines. So, therefore, we could classify them as non-resident citizen. For example, a seaman who is a citizen of the Philippines and who receives compensation for services rendered abroad as a member of the complement of a vessel engaged exclusively in international trade, so ika classify natin siya as overseas contract worker. Okay? Aside from that, if a Filipino citizen who was previously a non resident citizen and who arrives and resides permanently in the Philippines at any time during the taxable year, shall likewise be treated as a non resident citizen for this same taxable year with respect to his income derived from the sources abroad until that date of his arrival to the Philippines. So, yan ha ang magiging batayan natin lalong-lalo na itong pinakalast na situation or instance. Citizen, Filipino, previously non-resident citizen siya, tapos nag-reside na siya permanently dito sa Pilipinas. Pero, for this current taxable year, magiging non-resident citizen siya with regards to the computation of his income derived for the current year. Okay, so those are the classification when it comes to citizen. It could either be res resident citizen or a non-resident citizen. Let us now proceed to another classification and that is aliens. 
So when we say aliens, according to the tax code, it is a foreign-born person who is not qualified to acquire Philippine citizenship by birth or after birth. So we are going to classify aliens as two resident and non-resident aliens, while the non-resident aliens will be further classified into engage in trade or not engage in trade or business within the Philippines. Now let's begin with the resident alien. So when we say resident alien, those who resides in the Philippines but is not a citizen thereof. Okay, foreigner ka pero hindi ka naman Pilipino at nandito ka. Okay, this includes foreign individuals who stay in the Philippines has exceeded one year from the date of arrival. So nakapag uh, lumagpas ka na ng stay mo for a uh, day more than one year. Okay, so ayan. So they are not citizens of the Philippines but residing within the Philippines including foreign individuals for more than one year. Okay, so how about non-resident aliens? So non-resident aliens, okay, these are foreign individuals whose residences are not within the Philippines. Okay, ayan. It may be classified as engaged in trade or business within the Philippines or NRA um, ETB if we are going to uh, summarize it. So it's an alien who is not a citizen and who is not a resident of the Philippines but has a business particularly a sole proprietorship established and operating in the Philippines or a non-resident alien who comes to the Philippines and stays for an aggregate period of more than 180 days during the taxable year. It's either uh, pumunta ka dito, ayan, may business ka, particularly a sole proprietorship, or kung wala naman, you stayed in the Philippines for an aggregate period of more than 180 days, magiging uh, uh, resident alien ka or non-resident alien engaged in trade or business. Okay? So, next is not engaged in trade or business within the Philippines. So, if an alien stays in the Philippines for only 180 days or less, or he is not deriving business income in the Philippines, pumunta lang siya dito from a vacation, at hindi naman lumagpas yung stay niya for 180 days, okay, so he will be considered non-resident alien and not engaged in trade or business. Therefore, NRA NETB. Okay, so ayan. So with regards to the residency, ang pinaka intention natin dito is with regard to the length and nature of stay of the alien, which will determine whether he is a resident or non-resident. So for an aggregate of 180 days or more, and itibi ka na for 180 days or less, not engaged in trade and business ka. But if you stayed here in the Philippines for more than one year, magiging resident alien ka na. If one comes from the Philippines with a definite purpose that can promptly accomplish, ma-accomplish lang naman, he may be considered as a non-resident. When his transaction can be accomplished with extended period making his temporary home, the Philippines, he becomes a resident. Okay, halimbawa, hindi natapos talaga with a span of one year, at kailangan tapos ito lang, i-accomplish before siya, uh, before siya aalis ng Pilipinas, magiging resident siya. Kasi ang rulings natin for residency, resident alien, exceed siya tapat ng one year of stay. A foreigner who shall live in the Philippines with no definite intention. Anong gagawin natin dyan? He will be staying as a resident, uh, resident alien. What if there is a foreigner who has acquired residency in the Philippines? Okay, he shall only become a non-resident when uh, he actually departs with the intention of abandoning his residency in the Philippines. Okay, so yun yung mga notes natin regarding the residency. In the third one, we have special aliens. Ang tawag natin dito, mga special taxpayers. These are uh, alien individuals or it could be Filipino citizens who are taxed with 15% tax rate based on their gross compensation income when the following conditions are met. So, they are employed occupying managerial positions and or technical position with regional area headquarters or multinational corporations 
petroleum service contractors and subcontractors or offshore banking units. Or if a special taxpayer is an alien, all of his gross compensation income received is subject to 15% final tax. If ever that the special taxpayer is an alien. However, if the taxpayer is a Filipino citizen, he has the option to be taxed at 15% final tax based on his gross compensation income received or at regular income tax rate. Ayan, which is our tax table. Okay, so that's the annual ta taxable compensation if that is at least 975000 Whatever, uh, whether actually or not received okay, or constructively received. But, okay, let us take note on this uh, part, special aliens. Okay, under the train law, okay, tinanggal na yung preferential tax rate na 15%, okay, sa mga Filipino citizens. However, yung mga aliens, okay, alien individual, 15% pa din sila if they suffice the first uh, requirement if they are employed in regional area, ROH, offshore banking units, foreign service contractor and subcontractor sila. Okay, that engage in petroleum operations in the Philippines. Okay, so we have to take note the same treatment shall apply to Filipinos employed. Okay, the same position as those aliens employed by the above companies. But let us uh, provide a further information according to train law, tinanggal na ang 15% preferential tax rate. So most probably, they will be subjected to the scheduler tax. Okay, yung bagong uh, tax table na inisyo ng uh, train law. Okay. So, after the individuals, we are now going to move on to the corporation. So, if we are going to divide or classify corporation, it could be domestic or foreign. But, foreign corporation will be divided or further classified into resident foreign corporation, non-resident foreign, and special corporation. Now, if you're going to classify it as a domestic corporation, it is one organized and existing under Philippine laws. So, in general, it includes government-owned and controlled corporations or instrumentalities engaged in a similar business industry or activity. Now, domestic corporation is taxable on all income from sources within and outside the Philippines. Now, if we're going to classify it as foreign, it's a corporation organized and existing under the laws of foreign country irrespective of the nationality of its stockholders, okay? So, irrespective ha, of the nationality, as long as it is governed by the laws of foreign countries. It should be a uh, foreign corporation. So, foreign corporation is taxable only on income from sources within the Philippines, okay? It could either be resident or a non-resident or a special corporation, so, resident corporation, it refers to a foreign corporation that is engaged in business, trade in the Philippines. Generally, it establishes a branch, okay? Kung may mga branch dito or office for the purpose of doing business or trade. But when we say non-resident, it does not engage in business or trade in the Philippines. Ano lang yung magiging business activity niya dito? Its earnings are derived from fixed, determinable income from sources within the Philippines that are enumerated in the tax code. Example na lang dyan is yung mga interest, dividends or royalties, mga passive income natin, rents, salaries, premiums, annuities, and uh, some other capital gains. Okay? So, yan. While special corporation, it's uh, either uh, not classified as resident or foreign, but when we see uh, special corporation naman kasi, it's, um, my example niyan is, ano, mga cinematographic film owner or lessor, yan, lesser of uh, machineries, equipment, ayan. Aircraft and others and lesser vessels chartered by Philippine nationals. Yan mga special, ano yan sila, mga special corporation, mga franchising companies. Okay, so another one is estates. Okay, so when you say estates, 
Yeah, this is composed of all the properties, rights, and obligations, including those properties, earnings, or obligation that have accrued thereto since the opening of the succession. Okay, ito yung mga income from the estates. Okay, that is left by the decedent after death. Okay, so yung income niya will be subject to income taxation and the privilege okay of transferring the right is subject to estate tax okay a uh, uh, trust a trust is uh, it is an obligation imposed or a right to administer over a property given to a person for the benefit of the other okay so ayan created it, uh, it is created by will or otherwise where the property of the grantor is being transferred to the trustee or administrator for purposes of management or eco conserve lang yung property. So, the income will be subjected to income tax. Okay? The income of the property and trust. Yan. So, and we have also the partnership. Okay? We already know what is partnership. It's a contract whereby two or more persons bind themselves to contribute money, property, or industry to a common fund. Okay, with the intention of dividing the profits among themselves. So, it is classified, fairly classified as ordinary or general professional partnership. Ordinary, it is created for the purpose of obtaining profits from the conduct of trade or business. So, ayan. While the general professional partnership, it is formed for the purpose of exercising the partner common profession and no part of the income is derived from engaging in any trade or business. Ayan, uh, GPP is tax exempt unless na lang if it is involved in merchandising or trade businesses. Ayan, so there you have it, the classification of taxpayers and earners.